<laughs> Cheers. Goldeneye. It's a big bombastic Bond film. Yeah, this is one that I'd always held in really high regard. Watching it again, I still really liked it. Sillier than I remember. I am invincible! We did the drinking game. Uh, I won't explain the rules, but the rules will be down below. It was, it was a big one. 176 drinks. Bond kills a lot of people in this film. First Bond to be produced after the end of the Cold War, fall of the Berlin Wall. Basically, a Russian crime syndicate, organized crime gang, uh, with help from an insider in the Russian military, steals a top secret Russian space weapon called the Golden Eye, which is an electromagnetic pulse weapon which can disable computers, and essentially they uh, steal it so that the leader of the crime gang can attack London because he holds a grudge against the British government. The name's Bond. James Bond. We got a new Bond. Piers Brosnan. He's gro he grows into the role with each film. The films get worse, but he gets better. And this one, he, I've always thought he looked a little uncomfortable, a little on edge. And re-watching it, I didn't mind him being a little on edge and a little uncomfortable. I like the fact that in the opening, he looks like he's worried someone might shoot him. Whenever we get a new man in as Bond, there's a sense of freshness. I can't say I don't really feel a sense of freshness with Brosnan. I don't know that he, at this stage, has really made the role his own. No. He sort of feels like a little bit of a, a Bond for hire. <laughs> Right, yeah, we've relocated after we were so rudely interrupted by the neighbours. Yeah, someone was having a barbecue. Unbelievable. Yeah. Don't they know this is important? I, it, Pierce Bro I'd like Pierce Brosnan to go in there and tell them... Then maybe you shouldn't be living here! A multi-talented man. He's good in the action. He's good at the quips. He can sing. When you're gone, how can I even try to go on? The first time we finally see Piers Brosnan in the new Bond, it's in a toilet. Upside down. Upside down while a man takes a shit. <laughs> Beg your pardon? Forgot to knock. Man, you forgot to wipe. <laughs> Again, full of quips. He does a quip to to 006 about it. He doesn't know it's a quip. You're late, 007. I have to stop in the bathroom. Oh, are you all right? Here's <laughs> Brosnan does a lot of jaw acting. There's a lot of like seriousness, like yeah. when he's getting squeezed, it's all all here. He he appears to have a very very tense jaw. The muscles in his jaw must really ache at the end of the day's filming. There's a, a, there's not a huge amount of charisma for me comes across in his character, but what does comes through in the jaw. He really I, I don't think I've can recall an actor who acts quite so much with their jaw. When The reason we're dressed like this is that this is a 90s Bond and Piers Brosnan doesn't dress very well. He, he pitches up, you know, looking like a school teacher when he's driving his Aston Martin. He looks just like some rich guy who's retired to the Riviera with his Aston Martin. He does. And then later on, sort of a couple of scenes later, he's got the sort of the cream trousers and the Gold you know, the, buttons. It's like the old school blazer. Mm. He looks like Alan Partridge. Classic English gentleman abroad. It's David Niven. It's Stuart Granger. It's Nigel Havers. It's a green blazer. The look, Imperial Leisure. 
Offset the look with those four old reliables, cravat, hat, summer spectacles and, for a touch of class, the Alan Partridge Blazer Badge. We have a new 007 and we also have a 006. Sean Bean plays the treacherous Alec Trevelyan. Lovely girl. Tastes like... like strawberries. I wouldn't know. I would. Mm. He chews the scenery a little bit. Not a massive amount, but he hams it up a little bit. And I think it works because Brosnan's Bond is a little downplayed, mm -hmm. a little bit stiff. And so a bit of a scenery chewing villain, I think, is welcome. He knows he's a, he's a, he knows he's a villain in a Bond film. Yeah. And I, I like it. It's funny you say Pierce Brosnan's a little stiff because he does make reference to the fact that um, sometimes he finds it hard to maintain an erection. I hope the third is where your real talent lies. One rises to meet a challenge. So then you're on the top, our second villain, a sexy Georgian woman, yeah. Russian, who kills people by squeezing them with her thighs. And she finds just murder in, ge ge murder in general orgasmic. <sighs> mm. Mm. Played by Famke Janssen, and I think she's splendid in it. I think she's absolutely marvellous. <laughs> she's full of life, she's, she's sexy, she's dangerous, she looks like she's capable of these things. <laughs> did enjoy a good squeeze. Yeah, at uni... We should probably... We went to university together. We went to university. We don't need to say where or when. No. A now quite famous British director was a lecturer. I think a BAFTA winning director A BAFTA now. winning, quite major British director was one of my teachers. I had to write a premise or a, a treatment for a documentary. And you were in the library with me. I did it in an hour, just before it had to be handed in. And there wasn't a word limit, but I had very little to say or write, so I put in a lot of pictures. Um, it was really some of the worst. You read it as well. <laughs> Shoddy. It was about a page and a half long. <laughs> it was about Russian roulette. I talked about Xenia on a top, and in that, death being the ultimate orgasm for her, and relating, and then talking about how Russian roulette was therefore the ultimate form of masturbation. Absolute nonsense. Hand it in to this uh, well-known director. Got a first! <laughs> <laughs> so the lesson, kids, is wing it. <laughs> Stop it, both of you! Stop it! You're like boys with toys. Isabella Skorupko plays Natalia Simonova, and apologies to Isabella for mangling the pronunciation there, but to be fair, Bond also pronounces it quite poorly in the film. Natalia Simonova. Natalia Simeonova. She is a computer expert in the employ of the Russian military working on the top secret GoldenEye weapon. She is the only survivor of the, the massacre at the start. And um, she she's, has her own personal drive. She's driven by her own personal story as much as Bond is, actually. Maybe mm. more. There's a sort of personal revenge mission because she gets screwed over by Alan Cummings' Boris, who's a kind of a playful rival in the office mm. and uh, I think she's for about two-thirds of this I think this is a really really well-rounded character yeah so she's got her own story she's got her own life a purpose she's got her own MO in this film which is really great I think it's let down as soon as they get off the armored train where all of a sudden within she's known this man for what a few hours yeah and she appears a terrifying to, few hours. And she appears to have fallen head over heels in love with him. It is a little bit of a shame to have had a character who feels independent and intelligent and capable all of a sudden just be totally bowled over by this anonymous suited man who's who's turned up. The most important Bond girl, if you would call it that, named Judy Dench, is the new M. And in some respects, the new M 
maybe it feels like it has more impact than the new Bond. For the first time, M is a woman. Previously, at worst, you might have said that occasionally M was just there for exposition to set up the film, set the adventure going. Yeah. And this is a great new dynamic now because it's the ultimate sort of chauvinist with a female boss. And then you can introduce, as they do, as one of the, was one of the most noteworthy things when the film came out, a fantastic clashing of philosophies. Because I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur, a relic of the Cold War whose boyish charms, though wasted on me, obviously appealed to that young woman I sent out to evaluate you. Point taken. I think this is Judi Dench at her best as M, because she's given a great script, and she's really a boss, which is fantastic. As the films go on, the writers seem to want a writer as Granny M, or Mummy M, and there's this kind of, you're my boy, while in this there's a sort of mutual respect rather than a weird love. I agree that some of the writing of M, particularly in the next couple of films, gets a little weaker. Mm -hmm. she, it almost feels like she's about to bake something. Yes. However, I do, when we eventually get to Skyfall, I think there is a nut, and I understand it's a, it's a different bond, and there's a muddling of mm. how this works because you've had a reset. But if you can put that to one side, I think there is a nice transition from this is how Bond and M are introduced and there's a standoffishness and they don't like each other, but then eventually it becomes a, a, a closer personal yeah. relationship and that becomes a big loss for Bond at the end of Skyfall. And it works, that. Yeah. I'm strangling the cat. Strangling a cat. Irina, my mistress. Very talented girl. Robbie Coltrane has a great couple of scenes as a former villain, well, a former enemy of Bond, yeah. who Bond now has to ask for help. And there's some really fun, I hate to say the word, banter. My knee aches every single day. Twice as bad when it is cold. You have any idea how long the winter lasts in this country? Come on, Dimitri! But it depends. Silence! Alan Cumming plays Boris. And Alan Cumming, uh, if there's one thing he likes to do is get attention. And uh, this was a perfect character for him to play. Another man who knows he's in a Bond film, and particularly before you have the Casino Royale sort of reset of the mm. sensibilities, a, a scenery chewing. A minor role, but make the role as big as possible to really get the audience's attention. A scenery chewing, ridiculous, uh, you know, snivelly villain. I quite like it. I think it's I a, like fun, it. a fun performance. I agree. For a master hacker, though, he's got very odd, very easy passwords. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else do you call your bottle? What? It's for his password. He plays word games. It's what I sit on, but I don't take it with me. Chair. Like I said. I am not a master hacker. I don't know, you know, I'm not massively au fait on IT. I'm pretty sure, though, hackers in the 90s weren't using a, a, a basic level of password protection as poor as knockers and chair. Yeah. Not even a capital C. I know. Uh, that, chair one. At least uppercase, lowercase, number, and a special character, yeah. Boris. Your date of birth. Chair, 1968. It may as well have been password. <laughs> but with dollar signs as the <laughs> What would I ever do without you? As far as I can remember, James, you've never had me. We have a new money penny, uh, Samantha Bond. Uh, and I think this might be my favorite money penny scene in any movie as well, because it's flirting, but she's sort of rebuffing him the entire time, which is far better than just Lois Maxwell, you know, looking older and older. <laughs> Morning, Q. Sorry about the leg. Huh. Skiing. Hunting. We don't get a new Q, though. Desmond Llewellyn's back, and it's a very fun, very silly scene. And you pointed out something. It's, this was pointed out to me by, I think, my dad when we watched it on TV because he noticed it in the cinema. 
watching Desmond Llewellyn in that conversation, you get a very, very strong sense that he's reading a series of cue cards that members of the crew are holding up. Leather belt. Cue. I'm familiar with that device. Not one with a 75-foot repelling cord built into the buckle. Fire, and out shoots a piton, followed by a high tensile wire designed to support your weight. I see. One of the gadgets that Q gives Bond, which he never uses, no. is a BMW Z3 with rocket launchers on it. Now, I also remember it being a big deal in the news in this country that Bond was driving a BMW, but there was a big product placement deal done, and product placement is a... It's incredibly noticeable. Perrier cans, Omega watches. Yeah, and the Omega watch, it, he's basically like this, the entire, it, it, the watch is in every shot. Yeah. Huh? Murphy? Directed by Martin Campbell, mm. who would also direct Craig's first Bond. And he's got a pretty good uh, hit rate. With the Bonds or just generally? Oh, the Bonds! <laughs> yeah. We get Eric Serra, who is, I don't know how to say, pronounce his name, but that's uh, the, the Luc Besson's uh, composer. And it's an up and down score, to say the least. Seven Yaya Suite, which is his sort of romantic song, music, I think is fantastic. Why he he decided to throw in an awful sting song <laughs> right at the end that completely takes away any sense of hey hey what a great time in the cinema I can only imagine people are scratching their heads. <laughs> great first stunt to start the film. We have Bond bungee jumping, which sounds crap. <laughs> but is brilliant. It's thrilling, it's brilliant, yeah. That wire! <laughs> <laughs> Opening in Russia, I think, is fantastic. It builds. I love him pushing the trolley slowly. And then bum 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 bums. Uh, and then we kick into a great bomb fong fong. <laughs> Jesus. Written by was it Bono and the Edge? Just those two? Although their version, which was a demo, but uh, ooh, who went? Oh yeah, this is good. With a golden eye, I'll find his weakness. So the opening credits now, uh, they, they look so much more sophisticated than ever. Mm -hmm. Money's gone into these now. It's a calling card of the series, these big daft opening sequences. This one's great because not only do you get naked women, but you get a little story. You get the showing the fall of the Soviet Union. You get the women smashing the, mm -hmm. the statues, which um, caused quite a lot of controversy when it came out because I think lots of communists were not very happy about seeing yeah. naked women smash up your statues. <laughs> Bond breaks out of prison and kills all the guards as he tries to get out. Back in 1995, they've already set up, the Cold War is over. These men haven't done anything wrong. He, he kills so many people. It's incredible. And then that all builds, though, to one of the greatest scenes, I think, in Bond history. We get the library, and there's a nice little hint that the Bond theme is coming. And so then withheld. the tank bursts through the wall, the Bond theme hits, and the scene doesn't disappoint. Ah! 
there's another great piece of soul-searching dialogue where which I don't think gets quite the plaudits it deserves. It's brilliant where um, 006 says, I might as well ask you if all the vodka martinis ever silenced the screams of all the men you've killed. Yeah. What if you find forgiveness in the arms of all those willing women for all the dead ones you failed to protect? There is a tremendous fight between 006 and 007. Oh. <laughs> It feels so ferocious and hard-hitting. Martin Campbell said I think he wanted to do his version of the Red Grant Bond fight. Yeah. And it feels very much like a, a, a very positive throwback to that. It's in an enclosed space. They're smashing into the walls. I they're they, bleeding. They're bleeding. I think they did quite a lot of their own stunts for that. Yeah, yeah, they did. It, it's brutal. It's kind of short and nasty. It feels like a, you're watching a real fight. And what's, what's a shame is that they never re you never really get Brosnan in these kind of fights again. He's bloody good in that. It'd be funny if you just... Ah! <laughs> Ends with a silly gag where Joe Don Baker turns up. Yo, a ring. Which does also doesn't make sense because there are helicopters that you would hear. And then a terrible sting song. Oh, God, it's dull. I mean, yeah. I know all sting songs are dull, but. Hey, he used to be a teacher. Imagine just how dread you would have dreaded. Oh God, it's Mr. Sting. Oh, next. got double Sting. <laughs> Maybe you two like to finish debriefing each other at Guantanamo. Hmm? You ready? It's a sillier film than I remember, but they set out to entertain, and they really do entertain. It's silly, I think, in terms of some of the some of the, the plot is a little over the top, but also just in the in terms of the sheer quantity of jokes and com and sort of odd bad comedy. I don't think it ever threatens to derail the film. Oh, the things we do for frequent flyer mileage. He's going to derail us. In an ideal world, there would be less, and it would make a really good Bond film a great one. James Bond will return. Does it say that at the end? Almost certainly. We didn't finish the end the of the credits. credits so. Yeah, we had to turn off that sting song. I just, I mean, what a horrible passing gift for the audience. Mm. The experience of loving. Sort of leaving with a bad taste in your mouth. Also, one other thing, you know, James Bond and Natalia go off to have sex in Guantanamo Bay. Horrible thinking what's happening in the rooms next to them. People are being made to listen to that Sting song. <laughs> it used to be so nice, it used to be so good.